Meanwhile, Ho Yo Yi had a lot on his plate during a two and a half day visit to Washington, D.C. The KMT presidential candidate met with members of American think tanks, as well as current and former members of the executive and legislative branches. All in all, Ho met with 16 U.S. lawmakers, but did not meet with high-ranking officials, such as former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi or House Speaker Kevin McCarthy. In a whirlwind of action, U.S. Senator Dan Sullivan receives a box of Taiwanese tea and the business card of presidential hopeful Ho Yoi. There's a very special gift. Taiwan crisis, 1996. The mention of the year 1996 was intentional, as that was the year Sullivan had gone on patrol missions as a Marine during the third Taiwan Strait crisis. With KMT lawmaker Johnny Chang at Ho's side, the two Taiwanese politicians tried to foster friendships with U.S. senators. But Ho may have come to the U.S. at the wrong time, as White House National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan was having a 12-hour meeting with Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi in Malta. The meeting's main topic of discussion was peace in the Taiwan Strait. I've proposed a strategy based on three Ds, which means we want to use deterrence so that the mainland doesn't launch an attack. We don't want them to feel free to start a war. We want to prepare for war, not start a war. In only two days, Ho Yo Yi managed to meet a host of U.S. political figures. The list includes 11 members of the House of Representatives, five senators, and word on the street is that Ho talked with multiple members of the executive branch during a meeting with the American Institute in Taiwan. He also dined with former U.S. government officials, including former secretary and deputy secretaries of defense. In the future, we'll now have ways to handle Taiwan Strait security and regional security. Through exchanges like this, we can get to know one another. The visit seemed to be smooth sailing, but Ho's trip to the U.S. did have a few hiccups. Ho had been rumored to be planning to meet former and current U.S. House Speakers Nancy Pelosi and Kevin McCarthy, but the meetings did not come to fruition. During media interviews before the visit, which included meetings with many think tanks, Ho said he wouldn't mention the so-called 1992 consensus while abroad. But on September 18th, Ho penned an article that was published in the American magazine Foreign Affairs that did mention it. In the letter, Ho pointed out that he supported the 1992 consensus with the ROC Constitution as a prerequisite, adding that he was against Taiwanese independence and that he opposed China's one country, two systems framework to unify Taiwan with the mainland. Critics have said Ho's stance on the 1992 consensus was outdated dated and lacking substance. I think this shows that there's a disparity between the KMT's positions and what the world believes. I encourage the KMT to communicate more with our friends and scholars from other countries to help the party understand the international community and how they see Taiwan. Ho's article mentioned the controversial 1992 consensus, which the KMT touts as a touchstone for peace in the Taiwan Strait. But amid a lack of support for the so-called consensus among Taiwan's general public, it is unlikely to gain endorsement by the U.S. government.